turn with me, I believe it is Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And the word says this. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you are called in one body, in one body, and be thankful. I'm going to say this again. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to which also you were called in one body and and be thankful and be thankful. Amen. May the, uh, the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Shall stand forever. Listen, we, 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 uh, as Christians, as believers, we should make a habit of expressing Thanksgiving, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but every day. We should make it a habit of expressing Thanksgiving rather than being critical or criticism. We as Christians should always have a positive and thankful outlook. Amen. When you see something, good in your life, as believers, as Christians, you should point it out. You should point it out. And thank God for it. Thank thank God for it. Uh, We all complain occasionally. And I got to be honest, I do myself. We all complain occasionally, but practice responding to your complaining. This is important by finding things to be thankful for in that situation. Uh, This helps us to recognize the good in our lives, huh? And not to dwell on the bad. Uh, I have an aunt, uh, we, we call her BJ, but it's my Aunt Barbara. She is one that can always find the good in a situation. No matter how bad it is, she always have uh, found, tried to find the good in a situation. And I thank God for her for that because I know I've been through some things and she still would talk to me and she would try to look at the good things in that situation. So it's important that we as Christians, that we as believers, um, continue to be thankful even for the bad that comes in in our lives. Amen. Uh, In his word, he says this. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's what the Bible says. That's what his word says. And you probably say, well, why? Because we can never see the full picture. We can never see the full picture We can't look at every situation and clearly understand what is actually happening. Look, uh, 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 we can only know and believe God in Christ Jesus is at work in this situation. Amen. So we can't see what God sees. We don't know what God knows. Our mind is not God's mind. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts, amen? So we can't see everything in every situation, but it is important to see the good and be thankful in every situation, in every situation. In his word, it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, listen, understand something. I'm not going to be long today because I know everybody is moving around. But regardless of what is happening around you today, and I know a lot of us is going through, we're going through the holidays. Uh, We have a situation some are not doing as well as others. 
But I want to say this, regardless of what's going on around us, we can be thankful for God's presence. We can be thankful for God's presence and how he is sustaining us through our situation, how he is sustaining us and continues to sustain us through our situation. Amen. But when we look at things from a human perspective, amen, you know, we often focus on the situation and not the power of God. I want you to stay with me. A lot of times when we look at things from a human perspective, a carnal mind, amen, when we look at things from a carnal mind, we often lose focus and not pay great attention to the power of God and his uh, problem situation saving power. God is able to turn around any situation that he wants to. Understand that? I don't care what it is. The doctors can say, listen, this, this we can't do anything. God have performed miracles in that situation. Your friends have walked away from you many times. Hey, I, I can't help you. But then God has turned that thing around. Amen. Even your mother and father, your sister and brothers have have, have thrown in the towel on you. Amen. But let me tell you something. God is a God that never throws in the towel if you are a believer in Christ. He never throws the towel in. Amen. And, and, and I want to say this also. We can only rise above the situation when we learn to look for what God is doing in the middle of it. I'm going to say that again. We can only rise up above that situation when we learn to look for what God is doing in our storm, in our situation, in our problem, in our conflict. The only time that we can rise above it is when we're looking for what God is doing in the middle of it. Remember, listen, to praise God in the good as well as praise him in the bad. Amen. Uh, you may believe this is obvious, you know, but it is critical. We do it because it's important to understand that no matter what our situation is, we need to praise God because when praises go up, blessings come down. Amen. When praises go up, blessings come down. God inhabits the praises of his people. So stay with him. You may, you know, you may continue to, 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 to be critical, huh? But it's important that you look beyond your criticism. You know, a lot of us always look at things from a critical standpoint. A lot of us do. Amen. But it's important that you do not, as a Christian, as a believer in Christ, knowing the power of God, amen, you have to look beyond your criticism and look for what God is doing in that situation. You know, sometimes we are conditioned uh, uh, to be critical. You know, everybody always looking at things from a critical standpoint. The world does. The world is conditioned for that. It always looking at the bad instead of looking at a good, the good. It always look for the bad in the person instead of seeking out the good in the person. You know what I mean? And then we like to hold our past situations in the present day. Amen. We like to hold on what you used to do and keep labeling you for where you used to do and where you came from and where God has delivered you from. Do not allow anyone to hold you to your past because God has a destiny for your future. Amen. So uh, it's important to look at the good. If you want to uh, have a thankful outlook, you have to have this. So uh, 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 listen, when life runs smoothly, huh? we don't see this as God's gift to us. 
if you want to have a thankful outlook, this is what I'm talking about. You have to understand when life is running smoothly, this is a gift from God, and you should thank him every day that you open your eyes and put your feet on the ground. You should be thankful. Hey, God, I was able to get up. You woke me up with my, 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 and my clothes in my right mind. You woke me up with the activity of my limbs. Amen. You woke me up and my circle was not broken. Th these are gifts from God. This is not anything that we are entitled to. Huh? This is a gift from God. So when we have a thankful outlook, a thankful outlook, when we wake up in the morning, when we have a thankful outlook of what God has done, what God has done for us, amen, what he has done for us, it's important as Christians that we have that thankful outlook, that we look at everything from a Christian and thankful position. You know, uh, we don't need, we don't see how, God protects us. We don't see how he guides us along the way. A lot of times we, 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 we don't see that, you know, uh, but it's important that we learn to see how bad experiences, listen to me now, we, it's important that we learn to see how bad experiences can produce good outcomes. I'm going to say that again. Bad experiences huh, can produce good outcomes. Bad experiences can produce good outcomes. We should all take some time to consider the benefit of the difficult times in our lives. Are you with me? Uh, uh, it's important that we, as Christians and as believers, be thankful for not just the good times, amen, but be thankful also for the bad times, the difficult times in life, because trouble comes to make us strong. Trouble comes to make us strong so that we can handle the small situations that comes upon our life with God. It's important that we take time to thank God for that because we have so much to be thankful for, so much to be thankful for. Amen. So as we encounter our text, as we encounter our text this morning, let us consider the thought, a thankful outlook, a thankful outlook. Amen. So listen, look at the text. Look what it says. We're not going to be long. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That's what the text says. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. Understand something. This peace is the peace of Christ. This peace is the peace of Christ, and he alone possesses this peace. Not man, not your money, not your bank account, not your job security. None of that, none of that can produce the peace that we're talking about. So a person can experience true peace only as he come to know Christ. Only when he comes to know Christ. Only Christ can bring real peace to a human heart. Only Christ can do this. Only Christ. Amen. The, the kind of peace that delivers and ensure us of deliverance to our soul. Only Christ can give this type of peace. And, and when you have this type of peace, it's really easy to have a thankful outlook, a thankful outlook, okay? Now, uh, in order to have a thankful outlook on life itself, it is important that we must allow peace, listen now, to rule our hearts, peace to rule our hearts. The word peace in the text means to this. This is what it means, to be bound, to be joined, to be weaved together, all right? It means to be assured, confident, and secure in the love 
in the care of God. That's what it means. It means to be joined together, to be weaved together, to be assured, confident, and secure in the love and the care of God. When you know what you know, when it comes to the care of God, it is easy to have a thankful outlook. It's easy. It comes easy then to have a thankful outlook when you know and believe in the care of God. It means to know that God will take care of us. No matter what the problem is, no matter what the circumstances may be, I don't care how difficult it may seem to you. God is able to turn any situation around. And when he doesn't, he let or he allows it for a purpose. Y'all got to stay with me because a lot of y'all don't like trouble. A lot of y'all don't like situations. But sometimes he allows it so that you can see what he's trying to say and do in your life. Stay with me now. Okay. Don't, don't go away. It means to know God cares no matter what the problem is, no matter what the situation is. It means to be absolutely assured that God will allow nothing. Now, I want you to hear this. He will allow nothing to defeat you. See? Just because he allowed something to happen or something to go on, that does not mean that he's going to allow it to defeat you. God will not allow anything to defeat you. Amen? Nothing. He will not allow anything to defeat you. He's not going to allow your job to defeat you. He's not going to allow your family to defeat you. He's not going to allow your children to defeat you. Your, anything that's in your life, your, nothing. He's not going to allow it to defeat you. Now, it may bring some trouble. Amen? You know it. Family knows how to bring that trouble. Family knows how to bring that situation. You know we talk and gossip every day. Amen. Glory to God. But God would not allow them to defeat you. Amen. He would not allow them to defeat you in any way, in any way. I don't care if it's your job, your home, your family, your friends. God would not allow nothing to defeat you. But if you have a thankful outlook, no matter what's going on. Be thankful when things are not going right in your life. Keep a thankful outlook because I'm going to tell you why. Because when trouble rises in your life, Satan gets busy because he knows that past that trouble, past just a little bit past that situation, there is a blessing waiting on you. That's why he gets busy. That's why you see a whole lot of things start happening. What's, you, you ask yourself, what did I do? What's going on? What's happening? Why am I all of a sudden, I, I go to church. I, 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 I'm in Bible study. I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I'm reading my word. I have a prayer life. Amen. But why is this happening to me? Because there is a blessing, believe me behind every situation, behind every conflict, behind every trial and tribulation, there comes a blessing. Because Satan gets upset. He gets mad. He gets real nasty when he know God is about to bless you. The bigger the blessing, the bigger the situation in the trials and tribulations. I remember George Clinton used to say, the bigger the headache, the bigger the pill. Some of y'all know, uh, now everybody, Everybody don't know about Fungadelic, so I ain't, I ain't going to say that for everybody, but most of y'all do. But understand something. No matter what goes on, be thankful when things are not going right and keep a, 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 a thankful outlook. That's what it's about today. Don't just do Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day. Have a daily thankful outlook throughout your life every day. Be thankful, not just on Thanksgiving, not when they're just giving out turkey and pig feet and chitlins and yams and greens and string beans and all that. You have to be thankful more than just that one day. You have to be thankful on a daily basis. You have to have a thankful outlook on your life. Amen. Listen, look at the text. It says, to which also you were called in one. 
look what the text it says to which also you were called in one in the text it says to which refers back to the peace of god amen the believer had been called to peace not chaos we as believers are not called to chaos we are only called to peace that's it in one body in the text refers to being a single organism. The unity of the body of Christ is a strong reason for peace among the members. Now I'm talking church now. And the peace of God enables the members to be unified and to be thankful at the same time. In order to be thankful, you have to be unified. Amen. In order to be thankful in your family, in your marriage, amen. In your home, you have to be unified, amen? In order to be thankful on your job, in your school, in your neighborhood, wherever it is, there has to be some type of peace and unity. You can't cause chaos and be thankful, amen? You can't continue to gossip about people and talk about people and keep that chaos going in your family or in your friends and think that you're gonna be thankful. No, no, we are not called to be in two bodies. We are called to be in one. Any believer who stands out there in another body or another situation is not a genuine believer. Is not a genuine believer. There is only one body in Christ and only one body of believers and only one church, and that's the church of God. This means something significant for us. Believers are to act as one, amen? They are to live and behave. Listen to what I said. Live and behave as one body, as a body of people in union with each other. By letting the peace of Christ, and this is how you do it, by letting the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Peace is to be the deciding factor Amen. Peace is to be the deciding factor when you need, when you want to have a thankful outlook. You have to have peace. You cannot live a chaotic life and be thankful or have a thankful outlook. It's no way. It's not possible. We have to have peace in our lives to have a thankful outlook. And I'm talking about the peace of Christ. Amen. Look at the text. Let's go back to the text. It says, and this is the last part. It says, and be thankful and be thankful. That's what the text says at the end. That's the latter part of the text. It says, and be thankful. Believers are to respond to the demand for peace with thankfulness. Believers should always thank Christ for peace. We should have that thankful outlook, the peace he brought to our own hearts personally. You have to be thankful. The peace he brought to all men who trust him, you have to be thankful. The peace he brought within his body, the church, the glorious privilege which all men have to know his peace. You have to be thankful. When believers are, have uh, an overriding attitude, of thankfulness, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening in their lives, they are thankful. Not just in Thanksgiving, not, not just for Turkey Day. We need to be continually thankful for all God has done and allowed in our lives, good or bad, good or bad. And when we have a constant attitude of gratitude in our hearts for all that God has done for us in giving us, especially in giving us salvation and making us a part of the body of Christ. That's one thing you should be thankful for. Not just your home. Some of you got pretty homes. You should be thankful. You know, I don't have the big home, amen, but I'm thankful for what the home that God has given me, amen. I might not drive the fanciest car, but I thank God for the little small car that he's given me. I might not have the fancy clothes that everybody has, 
But I thank God for the clothes that he allowed to give me to put on my back. I might not uh, eat at the finest restaurants, but I thank God for the string beans, the collard greens, the yams, the pig feet, and the chips. Y'all can say what y'all want. But I thank God for that. Amen? I thank God for that. You know? I might not be the tallest darkest, handsome man in the world, but I'm close. Pastor's close, but I'm not. <laughs> Some of y'all laughing. Y'all better, sh Charlotte, stop laughing. But I might not be the handsomest, the tallest, handsomest, dark and handsomest brother in the world, but hey, man, I thank God for what I am. I thank God for who I am because my wife loves me. She loves me. Amen. So I thank God just for that. See, a lot of times we look at what we don't have or what we're not instead of looking at what you do have and what you are. Huh? Look at what you do have. Look at what you bring to the table. Stop looking at what you don't bring to the table. Stop looking at what's on somebody else's table and concentrate on what is on your table. Hmm? I'm talking to somebody this morning. Be thankful for what you are. Be thankful for what you are. I'm going to close. And, that, and, and as I close, I want to say this. Keep that thankful outlook because behind that thankful outlook comes blessings. You know, Thanksgiving has a, a great power to bring joy and break the power of the enemy. I just want to say that. Thanksgiving in a thankful outlook has great power to bring joy and break the power of the enemy. Whenever you give thanks to God, despite the most difficult circumstances, the enemy loses a big battle in your life. Come on now. I don't care what it is. When you start thanking God, no matter what's going on, the enemy starts to lose. He starts to lose the big battles and the small battles in your life, when you continually thank God for the good and for the bad, when you give thanks in the midst of your difficulties, you bring pleasure to God's heart. You bring pleasure to his heart. Amen. He is looking for Christians who live in a realm of praise and thanksgiving where the enemy no longer has an ability to hold or manipulate us in any way. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Somebody is dealing with this right now. But I'm telling you, I don't care what it is that you're going through. Be thankful. Be thankful. Weeping may endure for the night, but what? Joy will come in the morning. It may not take that long. It may not be as long as you think. Some of us think, oh, this, this trouble. Listen, my mother used to say troubles don't last always. Trouble don't last. And if you look back in your life, you can see where trouble went. It came, but then it went. It came, but then it went. Because trouble does not last always. Satan is defeated when we have a thankful heart because thankfulness during the difficult times is a sacrifice pleasing to God. Pleasing to God. Amen? And I just want to ask, are you really thankful this morning? I know we had Thanksgiving, but are you thankful after Thanksgiving? Are you thankful for your present circumstances? Hmm? Are you thankful for your salvation? Are you, are you thankful for your friendships, your relationships? Are you thankful for the job that you had? Because a lot of people don't have friends. A lot of people don't have jobs. A lot of people don't have salvation. Thankfulness is the key to your life. Thankfulness is the key to your life. It is the key that turns your situation around because it changes not only your situation, but it changes you. It changes you. Amen? Your outlook and your attitude change. Let me tell you something. Satan gets upset when he knows he's doing everything he can to bring you down, to destroy you. But then as he see you get up in the morning praising God, 
when he see you in the middle of the day, still giving praise. He throwing everything he can at you, man. He he just doing it. He, he giving you left hooks, rights. He coming straight down the pike. He doing all he can. But then when you hit the ground, you pop right back up, giving God praise. Giving God praise and being thankful and having that thankful outlook. Thank, being thankful is the key that turns your situation around because, like I said, it changes not only your situation, but it changes you. There is power in having a thankful outlook. There is power and having a thankful outlook. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer.